Hi, my name is Destiny. I'm Max. I'm Laura. And today we will be talking about Joseph Smith on how he was guilty, then proven innocent, and how a theory and how a theory in the philosophy of mind connects to this case. The purpose of this presentation is to present three theories for the philosophy of mind. Out of those three, we will pick which is the most plausible to the case and basically be making connections from the theories to the case. We will also discuss three objections and three responses to those theories. So our criminal case is about Joseph Sledge, this beautiful man right here. So one day in North Carolina, he decided to steal a few t-shirts and he was convicted of this crime, of course. But while in prison, he did manage to escape. And on the very same day he escaped, two very, very bad murders took place of two women near in the local area where he was. So naturally, they assumed it was Sledge, despite an utter lack of physical evidence. There were no fingerprints, no witnesses in the area or anything like that. And really, the only thing they had that managed to pin it to him were two jailhouse informants, so people who hang around the jail, you know, talk and get in the lay of the land to try and help them out with these criminal cases. Two separate people said the sledge himself told them he did it, and that's really the main thing that they, the state of North Carolina, used to pin the two murders on. So our first theory about how this happened is the theory of interactionist substance dualism and this is pretty much the theory that the mind and the body are two completely separate essences but yet at the same time they interact to kind of form who a person is the mind and the body connect to make you you so this is the view uh, most associated with the christian church of course because they can explain a lot of stuff that christians believe in such as the soul, so the mind is separate from the body, so when you die, when your body goes bye-bye, your soul can still go to heaven. So, connecting this theory to the case, the mind and the body are, to reiterate, two completely separate things. So when the jailhouse informer was talking to Sledge, he could have subconsciously heard or even misinterpreted what <coughs> Sledge was saying as him saying, I'm guilty and I did this. So they, the two people who later testified, of course, already knew about the crime. So while they were in the jailhouse looking for who did it, they could have heard what they wanted to hear so they could go ahead and get out of there. And that could have led to those two separate people saying that Sledge said he did it. Our second theory is the interactionist property dualism. In this theory, the mental states emerge only from the brain and interact with the physical matter, but are not reducible to matter. So basically this theory is stating that you don't have two separate essences, you just have a physical essence, which is containing the most power, and you still have a mind, but it's not a full essence, it's not as powerful as your physical body. So basically your mind is there to tell you what to do and what to think, but your body and your physical essence is still more powerful than your mind. In Sledge's case, his mind knew he didn't commit these crimes, so his overall dilemma was how was he going to prove his innocence through what his mind knew. <clears throat> the third theory is epithemonism. So what is this theory? Um, it's physical states can be caused by other physical states, and they can also cause mental states, but mental states cannot cause physical states. So, epiphenomenism is a form of property dualism. Um, it threatens to undermine choice and responsibility of our actions. There's a way, one way causal relationship between physical and mental states. For example, you don't have to be conscious to be able to do so. So, how does this theory relate to the case? Um, since the body controls the mind, um, maybe Sledge wasn't aware of what he was doing. He wasn't aware that he um, broke out of prison. He wasn't aware that he um, committed the crimes, and he wasn't aware that he sold the t-shirts. Um, the, so the consciousness would not affect the body, so he would have been innocent either way. He committed the crimes or not. So 
So what we all agreed was the most plausible theory is the one previously mentioned first, the interactive substance dualist view. And to reiterate, that is that the mind and the body <coughs> are two completely separate things that somehow, some way, connect the form of who a person really is. And once again, this is the Christian view because it can be used to explain a lot of the, it aligns very closely with that and the whole body dying and the soul living on and going to heaven. But the way it really applies to the case is that he was fully in control of his actions, so he knowingly stole the t-shirts and then knowingly broke out of prison. So he knowingly committed both of those crimes, and the fact that he did that kind of does look bad to a jury, that he's already committed two crimes in this state, and that could have been one of the main reasons he was convicted. Our first objection and response is the problem of intentionality. This problem basically explains how we examine our mind's ability to focus on our thoughts. Um, how do we explain the aboutness of our thoughts? So, how does our mind choose to pay attention to one thought at a time or many thoughts at a time? Um, how did Sledge ex how did Sledge explain his own thoughts of innocence to the courtroom? Like I said with our previous theory, he knew he was innocent in his mind, but this objection of intentionality states that maybe he didn't have the ability to focus on those thoughts particularly. So the second objection that we came up with is the self and personal identity. And this of course comes from Searle's paper on the 12 things against dualism. So he brought up the point that if the mind and body are completely separate things, completely separate essences, that how do they interact without our knowledge? So how do these two completely separate things come together all the time, every day, all day, 24-7, to form who a person is without that person even being aware of this? <clears throat> the third objection would be the problem of free will. So what is free will? Um, free will is having the freedom to decide uh, to, to have our own actions and thoughts. Um, so we are responsible for our actions and the consequences that come with their actions. As, so does not interactive substance do this on by the law of physics? Because as Cyril states, do I generally have free will or is it an illusion? Uh, is free will in a feature of our mind? So how can any effect on the physical world if the physical world is entirely determined? So every event that happens in the physical world is determined by a preceding physical event. So even if we could prove somehow that we have mental free will, it wouldn't make any difference to the behavior of my body because the behavior of my body is caused by the preceding states of my body and the rest of the physical universe. So um, Joseph said he did have the free will to steal, to steal the shirts because he knew what he was doing. He did have the free will to um, to escape out of prison because he knew what consequences that that could arise. But he didn't know what was in that he can be committed of a crime because that we never committed that crime. <clears throat> For our conclusion, um, the most plausible theory of philosophy in this impact the criminal case is the interactive substance dualism theory. This theory is important because we want to understand how our mind and body interact with one another on a separate level. Joseph Sledge was guilty in stealing shirts and breaking out of prison, but innocent in the murder of two victims. So how this all, in the long run though, is going to tie into the philosophy of mind and how that can contribute to other criminal cases is that here in America we have a jury system, so it's completely up to them and the philosophy of mind really, so what's going on in their mind, whether a person is innocent or guilty. And one of the things that I think we should look at more after doing this is not just did this person commit a crime, but maybe why. So in this, under these circumstances of this case, what drove Sledge to steal these t-shirts? Because that's a pretty minor sounding thing, you know. Did he not have any clothes or what was going on there? And we, you know, as a nation need to look at this <laughs> and realize that Maybe we could change a few things, looking at the <laughs> philosophy of mind and that. 
That's a good show, that. Um, sometimes our prejudice can dictate our way of thinking and cause us to subconsciously form opinions without realizing. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I'm so <laughs>